So I'm going to get the webinar started now, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be plenty more people joining as we go along. Before we kick things off, just a, a couple of uh, things to be aware of. Please ask questions in the question and chat box as we go through. I like to keep this interactive, so anything at all, feel free to ask. And when it's appropriate and when I can, I will stop and answer as we go along rather than trying to store up all these questions and then answer them at the end. Now, in this webinar, we're going to talk about Zerto virtual application and protecting your applications. And just a little introduction about myself. My name is Joshua Stenhouse, and I'm a technical evangelist at Zerto. I've been with the company nearly three years now. And in that time, I've also done sales, sales engineering, and also now into marketing. But before that, I was actually uh, an end user where I had my own virtualized infrastructure. I had lots of challenges around BCDR. And I actually bought, installed, and then managed Zerto as a customer. So everything that I talk about in this webinar is mostly from the perspective of me as an end user and exactly what the value I saw in Zerto, but now in the context of three years later with all the great features and functions that Zerto has added since. I'm sure you all know already, but Zerto provides enterprise class replication and recovery BCDR solutions for private, hybrid, and now public clouds. Um, just a quick agenda of what I plan on covering in this webinar. We'll do a general introduction to the Zerto solution in terms of how we revolutionize the market and what makes Zerto unique. We'll then go on to the architecture in terms of how Zerto actually plugs into your virtualized infrastructure. Then we'll go through the different features and a, an overview of the solution. And then finally, we'll wrap up with a, a demonstration of Zerto Virtual Application 4.0. Now, if you go back to 2010, 2011, or even in some environments today, if you need enterprise class BCDR, then the typical way to achieve this is with storage-based replication, with two matching storage arrays, and then configuring all the replication on a storage and run basis, and then maybe using some sort of automation software on top of that to try and integrate that one replication into the VM environment. And at Zerto, we saw that this was in the wrong place because you were doing all the replication on a physical and one basis when really you just wanted to select the VMs and you were tied into matching the storage. You were tied into having to have a physical DR site to store that actual SAN storage in. And in the end, it was just multiple different points solutions where you had to manage replication in one interface VM integration and orchestration in another interface, and it was just complex and a mess. So at Zerto, we moved the replication into the hypervisor, and by releasing the world's first enterprise class, all-in-one software-defined replication and recovery automation solution, we replaced the storage replication, making the replication completely storage agnostic. And we also replaced the need for a separate automation and orchestration solution because it was all included. And we also freed up the tie from having to have the same storage in the DR site or even a physical DR site altogether, which will become clear as we go through the different features that we support. And that's why, over the last few years, Zerto has been growing two, three times in certain categories year on year. We've now over 1,000 enterprise customers in every single vertical you can think of, from small VMware environments with just 10 or 15 virtual machines up to some of our large enterprise and clouds with thousands. It's the same Zerto software. We have 200 cloud service providers that utilize Zerto software to enable DR as a service for many of our customers. And we also have over 600 channel partners all out there selling Zerto the world over today. If we look at the Zerto solution itself and the, the key points of the software, the first thing is that it's virtual aware. And what this means is that it's simply integrated into the hypervisor and you're simply selecting the virtual machines that form your applications for protection. The actual application itself, how it does or doesn't work, doesn't matter from a Zerto point of view. We make it as simple as selecting the eight VMs that form your CRM application, and then we replicate them together. 
And the benefit of this is it doesn't matter how complex your environment, how complex your applications, you're just selecting virtual machines and then Zerto's virtual awareness protects them thereafter. You don't have to worry about any of the day-to-day -day configuration changes you make in virtual environments. It's enterprise class BCDR, and this doesn't just mean the features that we deliver of recovery point objectives of seconds and recovery times of minutes. It more importantly means that Zerto will never impact the performance of your protected virtual machines and applications. And exactly how we do this, I'll go into more detail as we go through the solution. It's software only, which means that every single person on this webinar right now, I would not be offended if you have another browser window open, which you probably do. And if you go to zerto.com, click on the free trial in the top right hand corner, and I'd be willing to bet the majority of you out there, any decent VM or admin can have Zerto installed, running, and ready to replicate VMs within 20 or 30 minutes. So you could literally have this installed by the end of this webinar with me rabbiting on in your ear on the side. And importantly, Zerto is storage agnostic and also hypervisor agnostic, which allows you freedom of choice and the ability to protect your applications and virtual machines anywhere as we titled the webinar because it really is not down to lock-in. If you think back to storage-based replication, you didn't choose your storage based on the best vendor price and SLA. You, ba you based your DR storage on what you're running in production. Maybe you want to use something cheaper. Maybe you want to use a different hypervisor in your DR site because you already have the licensing. With Zerto, you now have this choice. And that's because with one strategic software solution, for your private cloud, we support VMware to VMware replication and recovery, Microsoft Hyper-V to Hyper-V replication and recovery, and also cross-hypervisor replication and recovery. And all this simply means is that if you want to utilize, for example, VMware vSphere in production and Microsoft Hyper-V in, in your DR site for a a utilization of maybe your existing licenses to reduce the costs of DR, then you can do that with Zerto and we automatically convert the virtual machines on the fly. It's the same replication, the same capabilities. It also means that for satellite offices over any distance, you can now have replication from multiple Hyper-V or VMware data centers into your central VMware vSphere headquarters, for example. If you don't want to host your own DR site altogether, and there are many reasons for doing this, we typically see over a three year period, a 70% cost saving of using Zerto for DR as a service rather than a traditional on-premise infrastructure where you have to provision the site, the storage, the servers, and then have someone you know just keep the lights on. You can use Zerto for hybrid cloud to replicate into a Zerto cloud service provider, of which there are now 200 worldwide. For DR as a service, you can actually use Zerto to migrate to a cloud provider if you want a managed service, and they will use the same Zerto software to protect the virtual machines between their own data centers. Or we have some customers who move their virtual machines to a Zerto cloud service provider and then have reverse DR as a service so they always maintain that local copy and the ability to move out of the hybrid cloud. And then the final option that we have is the ability to replicate from your on-premise VMware vSphere or Hyper-V site directly into Amazon Web Services, which gives you a great way of bursting into the cloud, the public cloud specifically, or using it for DR as a service, or even migration projects. So I want to start with a traditional private cloud architecture. And in this example here, I have VMware vSphere in my production site and Microsoft Hyper-V in my DR site. It can be a mix of either. It's now completely up to you. Just in terms of the minimum requirements, for vSphere, it's 4.0 update one onwards. And for Microsoft Hyper-V, it is Hyper-V Server 2012 R2 onwards. The first component that you install in a private cloud is our Zerto Virtual Manager, which is just a Windows.NET service. You install it in a Windows VM with a static IP, 
and it gives you the VM level integration into the vCenter or the System Center and your management interface for just simply selecting those VMs that form the applications. A uh, common question is, can I put it on the same VM as vCenter or System Center? Well, yes, you can. But from our point of view, for best practices, we recommend a separate VM, just because if you imagine clicking to fail over 100 VMs, then you don't want the Zerto manager in the vCenter, for example, fighting for the same resources. Do I have a, a quick question here regarding licensing? And for example, SQL, Exchange, Oracle, etc. And the question is, do I need a license for these applications in your recovery site? Well, from an architectural point of view, from Zerto's infrastructure here, when we're replicating the data, there is nothing running in the recovery site until you click to move, failover, or test. The rest of the time, we're just keeping the data in the data stores, in the target site, and we build the VMs when you instruct Zerto to do so. So I don't want to get into the business of telling you what you are or are not in compliance with you, with your different licensing vendors. But just know this, that if there's nothing running, then more often than not, that means there is nothing that you can apply a license to, therefore there's nothing to license. But just please keep in mind that if, for example, you fail over, now there is something running, so you need to be aware of the implications, depending on which application, what kind of licensing subscription you have as to what that means for you. The next component that we install is our Zerto Virtual Replication Appliances. There's no downtime for deploying these appliances. It's done from the Zerto Manager interface, and they're extremely small in their footprint. They use one vCPU, one to three gig of RAM, and 12 gig of disk space. And these are what enable the VM level replication between the sites. You deploy one per host in each source and target cluster to support vMotion or live migration between the hosts while continuing the protection. And because we have one per host, this is a scale out architecture. You don't have to sit there in advance and do two weeks of sizing exercises to work out how many replication appliances you do or don't need. It's very simple one per host. And this is how the same Zerto software can protect the small environments to the very large, because you're typically going to have more hosts as you scale that environment, and therefore more horsepower for this replication engine. The replication appliances have built-in bandwidth optimization and compression. You typically get a 50% plus built-in compression, depending on the actual data itself. You can throttle the VM level replication over the IP link between working hours so that it doesn't saturate it. And they also have built-in resiliency where if the link goes down, they don't start storing a huge backlog of writes on the disk in their production site. All we simply do is maintain an online index of the most recently changed blocks. And all that does is reference the range. It doesn't store the blocks themselves. So when the link comes back online, we simply look at this tiny index and say, what are the most recently changed blocks? The replication appliance reads them from the source storage, copies those changes, replicates, inserts them in the recovery site, and automatically self heals. In the recovery site storage, we of course keep a copy of the replicated VM data, and we also keep a journal of change, which allows point in time recovery. And a huge benefit of this is that it typically only uses around 7 to 10% additional space. If you look at, for example, storage-based replication, that usually involves configuring snapshot and replication reserves in both the source storage and the target storage, which can be anything from 30% plus, depending on the storage vendor and technology, of additional storage usage just for configuring the replication and going to previous points in time. With Zerto, because it's only 10%, we typically see a cost and space saving of 20, 30% plus over a traditional storage-based replication. We have a, a question here. What happens if the VRA on a host has an issue and doesn't manage to keep its index of change blocks up to date? So that's a good question. And I have two very quick answers. One, 
its index is actually stored inside the memory of the hypervisor rather than the replication appliance itself. And it uses eight megabytes of space. It can never use any more than that because it's simply an index of references. It will just simply reference a larger range rather than ever consuming more than the eight meg. And what that means is that if, for example, you reboot the replication appliance, maybe because you've just upgraded in place, then as soon as that appliance comes back online, it reads the index from the hypervisor memory and then gets back in sync. If, for example, you had an issue where you only had one replication appliance, one host, the host rebooted and you've lost that index and there was some period of change, then there is a final consistency check that we can do where we'll read the source disk, read the target disk, replicate any changes and self-heal. So there's multiple different techniques that we'll use to always maintain the consistency. So please don't worry about that. If anybody has any further questions on this architecture, please feel free to type them out now and we can come back as I move on in the interest of time. If we look at uh, architecture for replicating to Amazon Web Services, the same on-premise configuration, the only difference is, is that you need at least a VPN to your VPC, your networking Amazon Web Services. You deploy your replication appliances, but only this time it's only on your source rep hypervisors. There is no hypervisor in AWS, as I'm sure you know. But in AWS itself, we need an extra large Windows EC2 instance where we basically deploy a Zerto virtual manager, but for Amazon. But in Amazon, it also handles all of the replica data as well. So that's why we called it a Zerto cloud appliance, even though, I'll be honest, it's not actually an appliance. It is still a Windows install. Quick question we've got here is, can we send the slides to the audience? Then everyone will get a recording of the webinar, which you can use thereafter. And I hope that's sufficient. I think that might also include a, include a link to the slides, but I'll, I'll double check. Very simple reason why you install a, the equivalent of a Zerto manager in AWS is that if you lost access to your production site, then you have something to log into, into in Amazon in order to initiate the recovery process. The replica data in Amazon is actually stored in S3 storage along with the same journaling technology and there are no EC2 instances, i.e. your virtual machines in Amazon, running until you initiate a failover, a migration, or a test process. Once you click to do any of these things, Zerto then performs an EBS, an EC2 import from S3, which can take between 20 and 60 minutes, depending on the data set and your AWS region and configuration. But after that, then Zerto gives you a recovery time objective of minutes with the boot ordering, etc. But the biggest benefit of this architecture is that because you're not paying for any EC2 instances running other than the Zerto management interface, and you're using S3 storage, when you're utilizing Zerto to replicate to Amazon, it is an insanely cheap DR target with all of the features that you would expect between your production sites. So if we move on past the architecture and we look at the complete solution, then we do have a quick question on what happens to production during a test. I'll come back to that because we do have a specific point, so I'll answer that later on. But if you look at all the different components that you need for a complete VCDR, the first thing that you typically need is some replication and a copy of the data in the recovery site so that if you have a site-wide disaster, you can recover. And in 2015, everything is now becoming software defined from we started with the servers, then we moved to security, then to networking, and Zerto did the same thing for the replication. And now you're starting to see more and more software defined storage as an example. So you need enterprise class software defined virtual replication. The continuous data protection, this is a requirement in today's modern infrastructures because people uh, um, you, you know, they have cloud-based applications on their phone. They're not used to losing large amounts of data because everything's backed up. It's no longer good enough in your enterprise infrastructure to have data loss of hours and days 
because that's when you last took a snapshot or a backup. You need to minimize that data loss to ensure you can always recover within seconds, which is exactly what continuous data protection means. You need disaster recovery orchestration and automation, and also the same recovery orchestration and automation for migrations to remove the reliance on individuals so you can click to test, click to failover, and have the whole thing automated in minutes. You always need an offsite backup, and what I mean by this is a third copy of the data, traditionally taken by tape backups and then shipped offsite to ensure that you always have the ability to recover no matter what happens with the replication or your maybe on-premise backups. And it's also typically used for long-term retention and archiving. And there are certainly many different technologies that you can go out there today to achieve each of the different elements that you see here. And if you do that, you will be protected, but the one thing you won't have is simplicity. And Zerto is the only solution in the world today that gives you all of the components that you see here for a complete BCDR solution in one simple to use software solution. And what I'm now gonna do is take you through each of these areas and exactly how Zerto delivers them. So we'll go into a bit more detail on the individual features. Before I move on to that, I just have a couple of quick questions. First one is, how long would it take to seed a 100 gig VM into Amazon using Zerto? Great question. I love that kind of question because I have to give the unfortunate answer of it depends because it depends on how big your one link is and how saturated that is, so how much bandwidth is available. But there's a very important point here from a Zerto point of view. And I'll go into a bit more detail when we move on to the next slide. But because Zerto doesn't use snapshots for replication, then the initial sync, we will compress the data and send it as quickly as possible. But you can just leave the initial sync to run in the background, and at no point will Zerto ever slow down that protected VM. So this is very important when you're considering initial replications into Amazon, that if you had, for example, three terabytes of VM data and maybe a hundred gig link, I mean, sorry, a hundred meg link, then you can just protect it, leave it running in the background, and within maybe a few days, depending on you know the saturation and the actual amount of free space in those disks, then it will be complete. But that whole time, the production VMs will never slow down. We have another question. Does Zerto replicate changes made to the ESX hosts? No, it certainly doesn't. Um, Quite often we have customers who have dual V centers, for example, where you need a DRV center so that when you lose access to your primary site, you have a Zerto manager and a V center in your recovery site to initiate the recovery process. If you want to put those in the same vSphere domain or in Linux mode, you can do, but we don't handle replicating ESX level or V center level settings. Another quick question, does Zerto allow manual seeding of VMs? So I think you know that means a, like a pre-seeding option. Yes, it does, but that's not to Amazon. It's only for your on-premise data centers or to a Zerto cloud service provider can you use a pre-seeding slash initial sync feature. So we'll move on for the enterprise class replication. Zerto is continuously replicating the data at the block level from the hypervisor, which minimizes your data loss by giving you a recovery point objective of seconds. And how it works is that as a write is performed on a protected VM, a copy of that write is sent in the memory of the hypervisor to the local replication appliance, which then compresses, replicates, and inserts it in the recovery site. Now, this write is only sent to the replication appliance once it has been confirmed by the source storage. We don't impact the speed or introduce any latency to that write, which is why we will never impact the performance of this replication, because we're not using any form of snapshots. And the important thing with this RPO of seconds is that you might have, for example, some applications where you think, oh, I can just replicate it every few hours and that's okay. But the beauty of this replication is that if, for example, there's a high amount of data change, you've now got the leeway 
to cope with those bursts in data change, get them replicated across, and still always meet your SLAs of maybe a few minutes, a couple of hours, and always have that headroom of the replication. We have another, twist, uh, another question, sorry, around the DR testing and production VMs. I promise I will come back to both of these questions and answer them with the slides, and I'll explain in the back. And just to clarify, because Zerto is not using the snapshots, this is why I say it's enterprise class, because it's continuously running, so you don't have to schedule when it will or won't run, which obviously creates problems as you scale up the number of protected VMs trying to manage multiple schedules. You just turn it on, and it goes, and gives you this enterprise class protection. Because we're replicating in the hypervisor between these replication appliances, it doesn't matter what the under, underlying storage is, or even how it's configured. You could go from NetApp to EMC. You could go HP to Pure. You don't have to match the one configurations. You're not locked in, and you're removing the complexity because you're configuring everything on a per VM level in the hypervisor. It doesn't matter what the actual application inside that VM is. So I just had a, qu a question. Can Zerto protect SQL 2012 VMs? Yes, it can. Zerto is doing bot level replication. We can protect anything running in those VMs to the opposite side. Now, another benefit of being storage agnostic is, as I mentioned before, the ability to reuse storage. If, for example, you want to reutilize your existing storage in DR and buy new storage for production, you can do that with Zerto. It's absolutely no problem. And then for cross-hypervisor replication, I'm sure many of you have a few questions around this statement because, i be honest, I had the same when I first heard this. What actually happens is, because Zerto is doing block-level replication, when we see a write in the protected VM, we simply replicate and insert that block-level change in the target virtual disk format. And this means that there's no conversion process from going to VMDK to VHD or VHDX, because as soon as you protected that VM and we've done the initial sync, that data was always created in the target format. We automatically convert all of the virtual machine settings, and the only thing you need to be aware of on top is whether you need to install or manage host integration or VMware tools, and you can use scripting to do that. But one thing I will say is that we do have a cross-hypervisor data sheet which goes into much more detail. If you're interested in that, please check it out. It is available on our online resources because there are so many different permutations of VM level versions, uh, this NIC, this Gen 1, this Gen 2 VM. It really is a bit of a minefield, but you can be safe in the knowledge from the Zerto perspective. It is documented what will happen, and you can change all of these mappings depending on the requirements. We have a question around VMware licensing, and again, I don't want to say this is uh, an authoritative uh, answer, but I'm pretty sure from my understanding of VMware licensing that you always have to license your recovery site infrastructure. But from a Zerto perspective, I can tell you that from it doesn't matter if it's the same license, you can replicate between different versions um, from maybe 10 hosts in production to a couple of hosts in the DR site. As long as it's big enough to run what you need to fail over, then it's completely up to you. Now, the title of this of the sorry, the webinar was protecting your applications, and typically in an enterprise environment, we see applications that are made up of multiple virtual machines, each with many virtual disks spread across different data stores and different hosts. And in Zerto, we have the concept of complete application protection with our virtual protection group technology. What this allows you to do is for each application you create a virtual protection group, you place the virtual machines that form that protection group into the protection, and then we replicate them continuously together so that you can recover them all to the exact same point in time a few seconds in the past. So it allows you to recover your multi-VM applications consistently. And this 
allows you to prioritize the replication on a per application basis. So you can say, my CRM is tier one, always maintain a minimum RPO of 20 plus seconds or less, sorry. And then if the bandwidth becomes constrained, then maybe my tier three application, let the RPO increase. And when the bandwidth becomes available, Zerto will automatically bring it straight back down. So you can liken it to a built-in quad. But the important thing with this VPG technology here is if you compare Zerto to a couple of the free or VM-level snapshot-based replication solutions out there, they don't have this consistency looping concept. Um, this is why they fundamentally don't scale, because each VM is replicated to completely different timestamps. So if you have five VMs that form one application, and they're all at different timestamps in the recovery site, and I ask, when can you recover your CRM application to? The answer, unfortunately, is I don't know. In a storage-based replication world, this wasn't a problem because you just placed all the VMs on the same one, and the whole one was recovered to the same point in time. If you move that replication into the hypervisor, you have to keep the same consistency grouping technology, otherwise it's not enterprise class and it's not scalable. I have a quick question around OpenStack and Zerto support. We don't support it right now, but it is planned for next year. We already mentioned the preceding um, feature with a previous question. And just to clarify, once you create this virtual protection group, the day-to-day -day changes that you make, such as vMotion, storage vMotion, adding, removing, resizing disks or mix, Zerto sees this, replicates the change, you don't have to make any manual reconfigurations in, to keep the replication run. For continuous data protection, as I mentioned, Zerto keeps a journal of the data which is stored in the recovery site, allowing you to simply rewind to any point in time. And the benefit of this is, say for example, you have 30 different applications to protect. And from a virtualization infrastructure point of view, I never knew what 29 of those applications actually did deep down or how it really worked day to day. I just knew I needed to provide the virtual infrastructure and ensure that everything started in the correct order from the same point in time. And with the Zerto journal-based technology, then you simply select the point in time, which can be increments down to the second, so every few seconds, up to two weeks in the past 14 days. So now you're not just protected against losing a site due to a power failure, hardware failure, or a natural disaster, depending on where you are in the world. You're also protected against the more likely issues such as logical failures like a database corruption, faulty application upgrade, a user error, or simply a system-wide virus where you can simply rewind to the point in time before that occurred a few seconds before, not have to accept the data loss of going to the last backup or the last snapshot. We support application consistency in the journal so you can insert, depending on your own schedule, how often you want to insert and quiesce your applications, your databases, and you get the choice with Zerto to fail over to any application consistent or crash consistent point in time. The frequency in which you create these is completely defined by you in your applications and how often they support being quiesced. Zerto doesn't quiesce it itself because from a Zerto point of view, we could do application consistent points in time every 10 seconds. But as we all know, every application in the world would probably, would probably break if you did that. So we leave it up to you to define that frequency to minimize the impact. And most importantly here is that the point in time you select in this journal, all the VMs are recovered consistently to the same point in time. So rewinding any of your apps is as simple as selecting the timestamp in the checkpoint box here. And that includes your databases, your exchange servers, you name it, with the right order fidelity. It is the same as log shipping. You just select that point in time and it's rewound. You don't need your DBAs to come out of uh, hiding for the weekend. The, you just click rewind and it's done. For disaster recovery automation, you simply log into your recovery site Zerto Manager and you click on the live failover button in the bottom right hand corner. 
You select which applications you want to recover. It can be one, all, or a subset. We give some advanced options around the recovery, such as selecting which point in time to go to. And we also allow you to verify that it works before you delete the journal of change. So you can test, for example, the most recent point in time. And if that doesn't work, then roll back and try a different point in time. And then you simply click on the start failover button here. And Zerto then fully automates and orchestrates the recovery process with boot ordering, VIP addressing, MAC address changes, scripts, and the commit policy that I just mentioned to deliver a recovery time objective of just minutes. It's literally the time that it takes to boot the virtual machines is your recovery time objective with Zerto. We have a quick question regarding network latency to protect remote sites. Now, we don't have any strict latency requirements. I know Zerto's internal testing is to 1,000 milliseconds, but conceptually, there's no issue with going above that because all it will do is simply add that time onto the RPO, which is completely asynchronous throughout. So you might see an average 11 second RPO rather than 10 seconds. So it's not really the latency that's the requirement, but there is a requirement on the minimum bandwidth which is, to, which is around five megs, uh, asymmetric. So as long as it's around that or above, then you're okay. We have a quick question regarding recovering the virtual protection groups. Can you recover individual VMs or does it have to be the, all, the whole VPG? Now, for the click to fail over and the full orchestration and automation, that is designed to bring on the applications in the correct order, so therefore it's the whole VPG. If you want to use Zerto to pull out an individual VM and then just power that on, you can also manage that process as well. For DR testing, we had a couple of questions around this. Zerto gives you the same ability in just a few clicks to initiate a failover test, and I'll show you this in a quick demonstration at the end where we'll bring the virtual machines online in an isolated bubble network in the DR site and do all the same boot ordering, IP address changes, scripts, so you can verify the recovery process and actually log into the VM consoles and check that the applications work. But we do this without shutting down the VMs in production. So they carry on running in production with no shutdown, no impact. And we do it without breaking the replication which means you can do your DR testing in working hours in minutes because there's no impact. So you don't have to plan any downtime. You don't have to break the protection. You just click, wait a few minutes, log in, check it out. It's that simple. And because it's so simple, we don't just see people using this for disaster recovery. I myself, for example, if I had to upgrade the OS, you know, the latest Microsoft Patch Tuesday where I have 50 different patches I've got to deploy, I go and fill a change request form. The first thing it says is, have you tested this? Before, this was a big hassle. With Zerto, I click to do the test, test all of my upgrades. Within a few minutes, verify that it worked. I'd stop the test, which deletes any changes you made in that test, but keeps the up-to-date copy of all the replicated data. And then I go back to my change control form and say, tested, worked fine. Now I'm going to do it in production. And I'd actually then insert a checkpoint in the Zerto journal, a manual checkpoint, where I'd say before upgrade. So I knew in the journal a point in time I could go back to in case for whatever reason the upgrade still didn't work. We also have the ability to take offsite clones of the replicated VMs, but you can use this to build out dev test copies of your applications for long-term test environments. Let's say, for example, you want to run a test for a couple of months, or to build copies of your apps for DevOps type uh, environments. All the same features that make Zerto great for disaster recovery also make it just as applicable for migrations. So we have a move function, which powers down the source VMs, replicates the last few IO of change, and then brings the virtual machines online in the recovery site in the same few minutes with all the same customization. And because the replica data is just seconds of lag before production, and that you can test this move before you actually move, you click to migrate, and you can migrate any number of VMs you want simultaneously. 
if you compare this to any other migration technology out there today, you know, a lot of them you can do it for free. But if you're doing it for free, it normally incurs downtime. You can only move a handful of VMs every day, and it takes a significant amount of time. With Zerto, you can move any number of VMs you want simultaneously. As I mentioned before, you can do the initial synchronization in the background with preceding, depending on the infrastructure, and it makes it simple. And we have so many customers that use Zerto quite often for migrating to different sites, different hypervisors, and then re-protecting the VMs thereafter with the same solution. We have a, a quick question here. A couple of quick questions, sorry. Um, can we test failover VMs to a dev environment with different IP addresses? Then yes, you certainly can. You build that into when you're configuring the protection groups, and Zerto can do that. And then we have another slightly more uh, controversial, or not controversial, but a competitive question regarding, we're trying to buy a backup solution that allow, uh, sorry, trying to buy a solution that allows backups and replication. Why should one prefer Zerto versus Veeam? Um, that's a good question. Um, let me turn it around and say, if you look at a traditional infrastructure where you have your on-premise backups, you also need replicas of the data to ensure that you're protected against the site outage, and then you typically still take your off-site backups. One thing I can share with you is that Zerto is increasing our functionality. We're adding new features, and one thing that we have coming later in the year is the ability not to just restore your virtual machines and applications from the points in time in the journal, but restore files. So you can select a user's files from two seconds before they deleted them and then restore them so the user doesn't have to accept the data loss of going to last night's backup with a snapshot-based backup solution. So if you look at the context of that, then it's really not much of a comparison because you've got increments every few seconds, you can recover entire applications or your whole site, and you can recover individual files down to the second. The question is really, what would you need an on-premise backup solution for? So that would be my answer to that question. We have a quick question regarding failback, which is exactly at this point here. So Zerto gives you the ability to check a box where we automatically reverse the replication and start sending the changes back to production. It's only the changes. You don't have to remember any of the previous configuration. We remember that. The only caveat I will give you is right now, failing back from Amazon is a manual V2V export process. We are including it in the workflow later in the year in version 4.5 to have the same checkbox functionality. There's no geographical distance limitation between the production and DR site for one question. And another question, does Zerto support multiple target sites? Yes, in terms of you can have any number of Zerto sites paired together. But just to clarify, you can only replicate one VM, one VPG, to one target location. If you want a third copy of the data to a separate location, then you can use the offset backup feature, which I'm going to cover now. And what this does is it gives you a backup of the virtual protection group using the replicated data on a daily, weekly, or monthly schedule. And because you can restore this backup to anything, any Zerto manager, any B center, any system center, it protects you against the BCDR site failure because you can always recover with this portable compressed file. One question that often comes up is, you know, oh, if I, if I ask you, why do you keep backups? One thing will be, oh, we're storing files of users. So that's coming in the journal. Oh, I need to keep the data for compliance and regulatory reasons. Already have that with our offsite, offsite backup feature because you can store it in a disk, SMB share, a deduplication device, or you can even push it directly into AWS S3 and then lifecycle that to Glacier for a modern disaster recovery and archiving solution rather than using legacy tape. And it also allows you to extend the journal protection because I mentioned before the journal is 14 days. If you want to protect the data and keep it longer than that, then that's when you're going to use this offsite backup feature to keep it forever. The retention is whatever you define. It's 
simple compressed files, portable. If you want to keep that file forever, you certainly can do. From a Zerto perspective, we manage our own retention within one year, but if you want to then ship that out every year to a separate uh, folder or storage location, you can, so you can literally keep them forever. We have a quick question here. If we have a fire failure in the production site and fail over for a few days or weeks in the DR site, when we're ready to fail back, we won't lose the changes throughout the days and weeks. That most definitely, you will not lose those changes. Um, it, uh, it really wouldn't be much of a good DR solution if we did, because all we're doing is you're writing all the changes into the DR site, and when the primary site comes back online, we simply take the most recent changes, replicate, insert, and automatically get back into the protected state. Another quick question. I guess this could be used for an on-site backup and not just off-site. Then, yeah, it certainly could do, although the only caveat that I'd make you aware of there is that it's always taken from the replicated data. So if you are replicating to a DR site, there's no reason that you couldn't push that off-site backup back onto your production site if you so wish. I'd just make sure that you have sufficient bandwidth for the traffic going both ways. We have a quick question just to repeat what I said about replicating back from Amazon. Uh, just to clarify, right now, there is no automatic failback configuration when you fail over to Amazon. You have to, we have a couple of documented processes, but just to summarize it very simply, you simply install VMware Converter and then create an image back in production to get your data out. And later in the year, we will include a checkbox to automatically reverse the protection. Everyone will get a copy of the presentation and the recording to take home. Just answer one final question now. So we are starting to run out of time, so I'm going to go a little bit quicker. For simplicity, everything is managed from the interface that you see here, HTML5 based. It's the same interface irrespective of the underlying hypervisor. Simple to manage because it's integrated into the hypervisor. You're just selecting the VMs and we're giving you real-time replication data. KPI dashboard, SLAs, alerts, reports, and it's a BCDR control pane for the entire infrastructure. And we also have an additional component, which is our manager of managers, where if you had, for example, five D centers or 10 system centers, you can use a Zerto Cloud Manager to actually then plug them all together and view everything from a central interface. So if we look at an environment before Zerto, you would typically have one solution for configuring the replication, probably between the storage arrays. You'd have another solution for recovery automation, for mapping that storage replication to the VMware environment. You maybe have a third solution or maybe nothing for continuous data protection, so you either have that or users have to accept the data loss. And you'd have a fourth solution for managing offsite backups for long-term retention to ensure that you can always recover. If you implement Zerto with a single software solution, you have all the recovery automation, the continuous data protection, offsite backups and replication included. So it's just simply one interface, one skill set, and everything you need for complete BCDR. So what I'm now going to do is switch across, and I'm going to log into to show you a demo. If you bear with me one second. Just wait a second for this to load. Um, everyone should now be able to see my Zerto virtual manager interface on the screen here. So I think the first thing that hopefully you'll agree is that this is certainly a, a sexy interface. We spent a lot of time on updating the GUI, not just to make it uh, much sexier. It also now has bulk workflows. So if you're protecting a large number of VMs and you're wanting to, for example, configure all the disks, uh, the 10 VMs to go to this data store, it's now much easier than it used to be. But just to give you an overview of this dashboard, very easily, a uh, high level here, you can see I have 24 VMs protected, which form 15 protection groups. It's a total of one terabyte of data. I have an average recovery point objective of seven seconds. So this is the real-time continuous replication, showing a data loss across the board for my 15 protection groups, my 15 applications of just seconds. I have 
the built-in compression of 80% plus of the replication traffic. And in the bottom right hand corner, I have the ability to click to test, click to test or click to actually fail over with the live and test failover buttons in the bottom right hand corner. I just want to switch across and show you the VPG screen itself. Bear with me one second. So here on a per protection group basis, then I can see all of the information in terms of where it's being replicated, the real time recovery point objective, and the priority, its status, and its target site. So you can see here from my DC1 VMware site, I have two protection groups replicating to AWS, two protection groups replicating to Hyper-V, and then the rest of my environment is replicating between my VMware data centers. So you can see before I, I said that Zerto supports multiple sites being paired together. This is the example here where it definitely does. But as I said, you simply select the protection group and the VMs and then select the target. If you want to split that up and have one tier of VMs to VMware, one tier of VMs to AWS, then you can. From a Zerto perspective, it doesn't matter. We have a question, how many VMs can Zerto protect inside of VPG and how many VMs in total? So there is no limitation on the number of VMs in a VPG, but as a best practice, we recommend sizing them according to the size of the applications or the applications that update each other. I personally say once you get above 30, 40 VMs, then you're losing quite a bit of granularity, so I might not recommend going that big. But from a technical point of view, there's no restriction. In terms of the number of protected VMs, you have to install one Zerto manager per vCenter or system center, and it's a maximum 5,000 VMs that, and that we're tested to. It's not actually a hard limit. I have heard some uh, competitors say that you can't protect a single VM over that, which is uh, complete rubbish, I'll be honest. It's simply what we're tested to, and beyond that, you might need to increase the specification of the ZVM, but conceptually it would work. Uh, somebody just said they missed the answer. It's 5,000 VMs that Zerto is validated up to to protect him from and to a vCenter. Now, if we click along the tabs at the, on the top, I also have a Zerto manager for my disaster recovery site in VMware, a Zerto manager for Hyper-V, and a Zerto manager for AWS. And as I said in the presentation, I wasn't lying, the interface is exactly the same. It's one skill set, one technology to learn, irrespective of the underlying hypervisor. And the cool thing here is in the example of VMware and Hyper-V is that if, for example, you bought and installed Zerto today for 100 VMs, and in a couple of years' time, your finance director comes down and says, we're paying too much for this licensing, we've got to switch to Hyper-V, it's on par with features now, and you know, you're just going to have to learn the new skill set and we're switching. So in that circumstance, you can use Zerto to not only test moving to Hyper-V, actually perform the migration, and then reuse the license to then protect between your new Hyper-V infrastructure. So Zerto is a solution that's going to follow you on your journey because all we're doing over the next couple of years is adding more hypervisors, more integration platforms, and more choice. Now the question regarding licensing, so li licensing is per VM. We do have options for migration only license or a perpetual license, or if you're replicating to a Zerto card service provider or AWS, then tip customers typically pay per VM per month. But if you're interested in more, then we can certainly point you in the direction if you go to our resellers contact page or contact your own partner that you buy licenses through and ask them about Zerto and I'm sure they'll be able to arrange a quote. Now, what I do want to show you with the couple of minutes that we have left is a test failover process running to AWS. If I come across to my EC2 management console here, you can see I have my Zerto cloud appliance, my Windows instance running for the Zerto manager. But you can see I have no other instances running because I haven't initiated a failover or test process yet. Just to show you on the back end, that the data is stored in the S3 storage bucket here, which is stored in the same region as the Zerto card appliance. 
And in terms of the VPC networking, whatever you configure here, you can map to the NICs on the protected VMs for automatic configuration, as well as selecting the IP addresses for Zerto to change the NICs to when you fail over. And if we come across to my primary site, and if I click on test failover, I can select which applications I want to test. It can be, as I said, one or a subset. We have the ability to select the point in time to test. So we have the many different points in time down to the second. I click next. Start failover test. And Zerto is now going to build the test failover VMs, connect them to the networks I specified for testing, which we usually recommend to be isolated so that it doesn't impact production. But the whole time we're doing this testing here, you can see we still have the RPO of seconds. There's no break in the protection. And there's no shutdown of these VMs in production. You can do this in the middle of the day. When I first installed Zerto, 10 a.m., busiest time of the day, my critical application, I could do a failover test and see within minutes that it was recoverable. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, this is slightly sped up because, as I mentioned before, when you fail over to Amazon, we have to build the data from S3 into EC2 and EBS first and then apply the boot ordering. But just to show you what that looks like after it's run, when you come into the recovery site, then you see the testing recovery VMs where you can then log into the console of the VMs and actually validate the recovery now is running in AWS. So just as we're showing you this here, does anybody have any questions for the last couple of minutes? Because we've got three minutes left. And just while you guys are typing out the questions, I'm sure you guys still have quite a few. As I said at the beginning of the webinar, what I encourage everybody to do, go to Zerto.com, click on the free trial, get a copy of the software. You can install it with no downtime. If you want to be safe about it, you can maybe just pick one host, click to protect a few VMs, and when you see the continuous replication with no snapshots, the ability to click to test, click to fail over in minutes, it really is the most simple BCDR solution you could ever imagine, and it's the reason why we've been growing exponentially over the last few years, because we've taken something that was previously complex, made it simple, software only, and scalable. We have a question, are there any configuration options where the VMs fail over or the boot ordering? Yes, so very quickly, I can, bear with me one second, let me just change my demo environment. Bear with me a second. It's usually much easier to show than it is to explain. So when you're configuring the protection, when you click to create a protection group, you first give it a name and select the priority. You select which virtual machines you want to protect. And these are all the VMs that typically form your application. You click to define the boot ordering to ensure, for example, the database VM comes online first. And here, then, you can select the recovery type. So I can select Hyper-V, AWS, or VMware. And to answer the other question, then here you can select the host. You can select a host for all the VMs, or the cluster, or you can change this on a per VM basis also. You can also select the default data store and change this per virtual disk, which you can see here. So I could select my web, web VM. I can select a different data store. I can select a pre-seed. And I can also change all of the NIC settings. So I select a production port group for failover, a testing port group for failover tests, and a VM folder. And then finally, for all of the NICs on a per NIC basis, I can select different VM networks and different IP addresses for automatic reconfiguration. Another question, can you configure smart groups so VMs are automatically protected when new VMs are created? Good question. Yes, you can, but it's actually using a, a feature that is pretty useful, but not many people have used it other than V3 
VMware themselves in vCloud Director, and that's called a vApp. If you protect a vApp with Zerto, if you add a VM into that vApp, it's immediately included in the protection group and it's protected. If you don't want to use vApps, but you want to have automatic protection, we have a full REST API where you can very easily, if you have that knowledge, integrate Zerto into your workflows to configure the protection automatically. We have another question, how does Zerto function with VMware fault tolerance? I have a, if we have a host failure and those VMs were both protected with Zerto and fault tolerance, will Zerto defer to VMware? So I just want to clarify the terminology here because there's a difference between VMware fault tolerance and VMware HA. And I think based on the middle of your question, you mean VMware HA because that is what is typically used to protect between host failures where if you have you will have a Zerto replication plants on each host. If the host dies, all the VMs will automatically restart by VMware HA on the next host, and then Zerto will continue the protection without issue. If you use VMware fault tolerance, which is where you have the high-speed connectivity between the VMs, you have them in lockstep and all the uh, you know, implications and restrictions around their sizing to protect a VM so it's continuously running on two hosts at once, Zerto doesn't support protecting those VMs. We've now run over the hour, but I do have another 10 minutes. If anybody wants to stay, ask any further questions, I will stay another 10 minutes. But for those of you who've got to get off, thank you very much for your time. I hope you found it informative, and I hope that you now feel inspired to go and get a trial and test it out for yourself. So just to clarify, a VM protected with fault tolerance cannot be protected by Zerto. VMs protected by VMware HA definitely can be. I'll give it a couple more minutes for any further questions. Oh, this is a very tricky question I've got. Is there anything else from a VMware feature that couldn't be used on protected VMs? Let me think. So any VMDK with multi-writer flags, Zerto doesn't support. So we do support raw device mappings, physical or virtual but we don't support multi-writer VMDKs. And I'll keep thinking if I can think of anything more, but storage profile, storage vMotion, DRS, all those different things, there's no impact. Adding, removing, resizing disks, there's no impact. So uh, you know, any type of networking you apply to the VM doesn't matter because Zerto is just replicating the port group mappings. We have a question, when you select a VM and put it in a VPG, does Zerto automatically select all that drives in the VM, or can you unselect a drive if you don't want to replicate it? That's a good question. Zerto immediately protects all of the disks inside that VM. But if, for example, you have a disk on there that you don't want to protect, then more often than not, and please correct me in the question if I'm wrong, it's because it's a temporary database, and you don't want to replicate the changes to that. In that example, you don't actually want to exclude the disk. Really what you want is a copy of the disk so that when you click to recover, the data, temporary database files are there and SQL loads about any manual com configuration. But then you don't want to waste any bandwidth replicating subsequent changes to it. That's exactly what you can do with this swap disk function that you can see on screen here, where we do the initial sync, but we don't waste any subsequent bandwidth. And this typically saves 50% of the replication traffic on Oracle and SQL database VMs when you put that temporary database on a separate disk. 
if you've got a VM where it's got, I don't know, a two terabyte disk on there that's a, a general bit of a dumping ground and you don't want it protected, then we don't have the ability to exclude that right now. So all I can recommend is making sure that any VM protected by Zerto is run as lean and efficient as possible and doesn't have that kind of disk directly mounted to the OS. If you wanted to mount that over the network, then it wouldn't be included by the Zerto protection anyway because it's not a virtual disk. So for IAS log files, then all I'd recommend, create a new disk, indicate it as swap, switch the IAS log files to use that disk, and then you have pretty much the same capability of it being excluded because there's no data in that replicated disk and it won't be there when you come. So Windows page files changes would be replicated as well. If they're on the C drive, then yes, they will. If you put them on a separate, if you put the page file on a separate disk and indicate it as swap here, then no, they won't. We have a question, can Zerto replicate VMs running any OS? Or are there any OS limitations? Zerto can replicate any VM. Any OS in there does not matter because it's block level replication. The only OS limitations we have are if you want Zerto to automatically reconfigure the IP address. For that, we support Windows Server 2003 onwards, quite a few major Linux distributions, so Red App Linux, Ubuntu, etc. But if it's not supported, you always have the ability to run a post failover script as part of the recovery where you can just script the IP change if it's not on our supported OS list. So I can't see any more questions coming in. Uh, thank you for you guys who stayed on. If you think of anything else, then feel free to shoot me an email. It's joshua at zerto.com. And thanks very much for your time. Have a great afternoon.